Now, Ali, I understand that you came from Ed to Edmonton from Winnipeg in 1996. Um, you were obviously involved in the pegging community in Winnipeg for a number of years, is that correct? Yes, that's right. I uh, was involved with the community there. I did some open circles and I uh, wrote and sat on the editorial board of Minstrel Magazine. When you got to Edmonton, um, I know that we've talked about this previously, about uh, what you found here and, and how you wanted to start uh, some community building. What was what were some of the things that inspired or prompted you to do the building of, of the Edmonton community? Well, when I, when I came here um, from Winnipeg, Winnipeg had a very rich and diverse pig community and had, had uh, for a number of years and continues to have that. And uh, when I came to Edmonton, I found a lot of pagans. But I didn't find the community, so to speak. There was a lot of fear, a lot of people hiding out in the room closet. Um, and uh, I needed that. I was a single parent with young children. Uh, I really counted on my community in Winnipeg for support. Um, they got us through some really tough times, and the critical illness of my eldest daughter, and the difficulties of the birth of my son, my youngest. And uh, they were, my friends, they were very important to me. And when I arrived here, I found that there wasn't really a community, so to speak. I decided that Edmonton needed one, and if there was going to be one, I was going to have to start. Some of the things that you started include the CWAA, and that was in 2006, so that would be about 10 years after you got here. Um, Congregationalist Wiccan Assembly of Alberta. Tell me a little bit about that. Is that sort of a, an umbrella organization for uh, covens, or how would you describe that? No, the CWAA is born of an umbrella organization for witches. Okay. Um, members can be of any tradition or none. They can belong to a coven, or they can be solitary practitioners. Essentially, the purpose of the CWAA is to promote pagan ideals, Wiccan ideals, and to promote acceptance within the larger community so that we can be free to practice okay. and be treated the same as everyone else. And some of the things that the CWAA and yourself have uh, accomplished, including, um, you were telling me about um, getting legal status as a, as a church here in Alberta. Um, was that tough? Or no, actually, that, that was remarkably easy. There's a little, uh, a little bit in Alberta law that allows us to register as a church uh, for the purposes of purchasing land. Oh um, and that simply allows us to register as a church. It does not allow us any of the other benefits okay. and, and uh, that, that other churches of other faiths experience. Um, since then, we've had to uh, apply for marriage officiant status, and we're actually still in the process of doing that because the government is not yet convinced that we're entitled to it. Um, and we've also had to agitate quite a bit for charitable status, um, which the National Board is taking care of that. And it's slow going, but I'm confident, absolutely confident, that it's only a matter of time. Excellent. That sounds great. The Congregationalist Wiccan Assembly of Alberta is, um, I understand, is tied in with uh, another organization in uh, British Columbia, the, the CWABC. CWABC, the Congregationalist Witchcraft Association of British Columbia, which is, in fact, um, an offshoot of the Congregationalist Witchcraft Association of Canada, okay. which was founded by Sam Wagar in 1991. And uh, there are now seven CWABC temples in, uh, in British Columbia, one here in Alberta, and possibly within the next couple of years we're looking at having a second here. Oh, yeah. And I also understand there's been some inquiries from Ontario as well, so we hope wow. to be spreading across Spreading the across, Canada. Canada. Yes. across Canada, for sure. Um, also registered with the Alberta Health and Federal Prison System as, as well. Um, what was some of the things that the prison system would ask you for? For example, maybe pastoral care? or they, they have made a number of requests for pastoral care. There's, there's not a, a great demand for that because it's fairly uncommon for Wiccans to come into conflict with the legal system. Mm -hmm. um, but, but sometimes individuals who find themselves incarcerated will turn to faith okay. and, and come to the craft that way. And so we do go out and, and meet with prisoners who ask for that kind of support and see what we can, what we can do. And we actually have uh, worked with a couple of prisoners who were released and, and assisted in, in easing them back into the community. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now how, how, how is that accepted by the, uh, the administration of prisons? Like, do you find any any conflict with them at all? Or Not whatsoever. Very... I think they're relieved to find that, they're, that their inmates are actually looking for faith. <laughs> they are, they've been very, very receptive towards us. Yeah. Excellent. Great. I also uh, understand that you recently joined the uh, Edmonton Interfaith Council. When I say you, you with the yeah, CWAA. CWAA right? is now a member of the, of the Edmonton Interfaith Council, and we're really excited about that because mm -hmm. it gives us an opportunity to speak to clergy of other faiths to dispel some of the, some of the misconceptions about Wicca so that they can be less frightened of us and in, in exchange their congregations can also become less frightened of us. Wow, that's excellent stuff. Um, it, it, since you've come here to, to Edmonton in 96, uh, you've done a lot of um, event building, event organization. I know, I know that you uh, 
with organizing the, the Panfest Festival, um, things like uh, the Beltane Fair, I believe is it was yours for the Yes, I, I began the Beltane Fair. The Panfest, I, I uh, became a board member for about five years, several years after the, the festival was started by a group of very dedicated people. Okay. I didn't have anything to do with the beginnings of that. <laughs> but now, and that's in its what's eleventh year? Yes, this be, this, actually, I think this is the twelfth. Twelfth year, so yeah, it's been going mm -hmm. for quite a while. For, I know they build themselves as the um, uh, the premier pagan festival in, in mm -hmm. Alberta, yeah, mm -hmm. or in the West, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, a lot of people know of Panfest. Obviously, it has a good reputation. Um, your uh, your Beltane Fair. We just had the third one, mm -hmm. um, and I understand that you passed it off to the community um, as a. Charitable organization, or yeah, as a charitable organization, basically, um, I'm trying to shift my focus a little bit away from community building because the community here is is really full of life, and there are amazing, wonderful people with so much to share. They're willing to share, and I felt that it would be more useful to, for me to focus my attention on um, fighting against discrimination, um, dispelling the rumors and, and um, the misconceptions that people have about our faith, and bringing us out of the broom closet and into the light of day. Beautiful. So moving more towards advocation and education. <laughs> Absolutely, kind of yes. Um, now, in a lot of ways, Ali, the community that exists in Edmonton is largely due to the fact of all the hard work that you've done. Do you think that this community is going to be okay when you want them? I, I do. Your next I absolutely do because I, I need to remind you that I didn't do it by myself. I came here and, mm. brought, and, and originally brought people together. Um, for the purpose of publishing Pagan Path magazine and of holding open circles, which, which my coven, Ravenwood Temple, did at the beginning. Um, and the people that came out 15 years ago, back in the day, many of them are still active in the community today. They are still leaders in the community today. So um, I could say that I brought them together, but we all did the work. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I know that you said uh, in another portion of the interview that um, part of being uh, a pagan leader um, has to do with four words, and they were? Chop wood, carry water. That's it, so I you probably carried a little bit of water. Yeah, you? I certainly have. In the years that you've been in the Edmonton and also the Winnipeg community, you've probably met a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Some of them that you would call um, elders today. Um, would you consider yourself an elder? Well, um, at the risk of, at significant risk <laughs> of being attacked, I will say that yes, I do consider myself an elder. Um, I think by definition, an elder is someone who serves their community. It really doesn't matter how many degrees you have or who your teacher was or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. If you're serving your community, then yeah, I, I think you're entitled to that And to that you, title. Have, you have. <laughs> in the years that you've been in Edmonton, you absolutely have. Any mentors that you found along the way? Any people that you really respect and say, you know what, this is a person that really has done a lot? Well, you know, of course I have to mention Sam Wagar. Um, he is the founder of the original Congregational Spiritcraft Association of Canada and has been a tremendous supporter of mine um, over the years. Um, I'm also going to mention Jane Leverick and Michelle Forrest of Winnipeg who have done an absolutely wonderful job of creating and then carrying that community for so many years. It's really difficult for me to name individuals because I'm going to leave something out. Oh, there well, are absolutely. Also, you know, there are a lot of a lot of elders in our community, whether whether they call themselves not that or not. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, what thoughts would you uh, like to express to some of the people that are in the community that might be watching this? Um, you spent a lot of time with these people. You? Immense gratitude, and you know, there have been times when I've been credited for building this community, and actually, that's not true at all. I held a few people's hands; they built the community. And uh, they've been doing it for a long time and put an immense amount of work and effort and money into what they've done, what they're doing, and created what we have today. And uh, if I have any thoughts at all to express, it's thank you all so very much. Excellent. Beautiful. Well, I thank you, Ali. I really appreciate you talk, talking to you. It's just been amazing. It's been really cool.